So, excellent. So, Annalie, what do you think? Shall we make a start? Yep, let's go. Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to this webinar. Um, so, we are talking about the writing task two again today. And specifically, we're talking about discussion essays. Okay. Um, so what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at how you recognize a discussion essay um, and how you structure one and also look at some linking phrases and some vocabulary specifically aimed at this topic that we're talking about. Okay. Um, so first of all, let's look at the question. So. How do you know it's a discussion question? What are you going to see when you have a discussion question in the task two? And there it is. <laughs> okay, yeah, very good, the word discuss. <laughs> okay, and in the task, what are you going to see? Okay, yes, you're always going to see discuss both views and give your opinion. And how are they going to phrase the statement, the topic of it? Okay, very good. Yeah, Atta and Ramahatha. Hi, Atta again. So you're going to have two opposing statements on one topic. Okay, which you then, and what's very important with the discussion essay is that you must talk about both sides. Okay, you must give a balanced view. And then in the conclusion, you give your own opinion. Okay, um, keep your own opinion to the conclusion, not in the body. Okay, so you read the question, you decide this is a discussion question. Um, and then you're going to look at the uh, topic. Okay, so what is the general topic here for this question? Okay, yeah, we're talking about multinationals, multinational companies. What specifically about multinational companies? Okay, very good, Mohammed. The impact that they are having. Okay. Um, and where are they having this impact? Yeah, okay, very good. Arnel, notice that it's developing countries. So when you write your essay, you need to be specifically focusing on developing countries. Okay, very good. Yeah, the effect, the impact of these companies. Okay. So first thing to do, most important, underline all the key words in the statements so you know what you need to focus on. Okay. So what do you think the key words are in these two statements? Okay, what words would you underline in here? Okay, yeah, mul multinational companies, Dahlia, yeah, activities. Okay, yes, the benefit and the harmful. Okay, developing countries. Very good. Okay. Okay, and we're specifically looking at the economy as well. Okay, that's the main focus. Okay, so yeah, the companies, the developing countries and the benefit and the harm. Uh, also a good idea to underline the discussion and the give your opinion, just to make sure that you remember that you have to, to write about both sides and you have to give your own uh, opinion. Okay. And next thing you do, what is the next thing that you do before you start writing? Okay, very good, Daria. You need to make a plan. Always make a plan. Doesn't take long, but it makes a big difference to your answer. Um, yes, Prahu, you can also give your opinion at the end of the introduction, just very briefly, uh, and then you can expand on it in the conclusion. Okay. 
Um, the key words, Mandrill, are the, the things that you are going to need to talk about in the essay. Okay, so all of those things that we've underlined, they need to be mentioned in our essay. Okay, so we're going to make a plan. So very simple plan. We have one part where we talk about the benefits and one part where we talk about the drawbacks, the negative effects. Okay. Um, doesn't, no problem for your band score, Prahu, it's totally fine to do that. Um, so what arguments could you put for the benefits? How can multinational companies benefit developing countries' economies? Okay, we've got investment, we've got employment. Okay, generally. Mm -hmm. Okay, contributions, so we're talking. So, yeah, I think we've got similar things here. We have decided to go with create jobs and improve goods and services. Okay, two possible arguments for the benefits. All right. What about on the negative side? What could we put on the negative side? Okay, very nice. Pollution. The profits go overseas. Very good, Brad. Okay, competition with local business, Mohammed. Very nice. And somebody else put that. Okay. Um, so, similar things. Profits go to international shareholders, as Brad said, and threatens the local businesses. So, we've got competition here with the smaller local businesses. Okay. So, very important, okay, you don't have to give all of the arguments on both sides, okay? You should choose two on each side and then give some supporting evidence for those two arguments, okay? If you do more than two, you're going to end up just listing information and they don't like that, okay? So two main ideas on each side with their supporting evidence, okay? So let's have a look at the uh, structure. Okay, so clear structure, introduction, two body paragraphs, and the conclusion. Okay, so what are we going to do in the introduction? Okay, very good, Kia. We're going to paraphrase the statement, the question. Very good. Um, what else can we do? Yes, yeah, state the problem, Anissa. Very good. Um, okay, you can give your opinion. Okay, uh, give a background statement. That works as well, Prahu. Very good. Yeah, general statement. Okay, Awad, very good. You can also give an, uh, an outline. Um, also, Eulia, yeah. The, you can give an outline of what you are going to put in the essay. Okay. Um, so, paraphrase the question and give an outline statement. Okay. Then we go to the body. Okay, we're just going to look at one body paragraph here. You would do the same thing for the second body paragraph. Okay. Uh, so what's the first thing that we need to do in the body paragraph? What's the first sentence always? Okay, an outline statement, Glenda means that you say what you are going to put in the essay. Okay, we will look at an example in a moment. Um, ah, Menashki, yeah, very good. Topic sentence, okay. Uh, so a topic sentence, what's the missing word here? A topic sentence states, Okay, yeah, and then this, well, yeah, so it, it's one side, one argument, which would probably be the benefits, yeah, the main idea of the paragraph, good. So your topic sentence, everything in the paragraph 
must be related to the topic sentence. Okay, you cannot change in the middle of the paragraph. Okay, then we introduce our first idea, which in this case was creating jobs. Then what do we do? We can explain and give, okay, very good, give an example. Okay, give a specific example or you could give a result. Okay. Um, then after that, what are we going to do? We're going to introduce our, okay, very good, Kira, our second supporting idea, okay? Improving quality in this case, all right? And again, make it very clear when you move from the first idea to the second idea, okay? And again, you explain, you give an example, you give um, a result or a reason, okay? Good, all right. Um, and then you will do that again, exactly the same for the second paragraph, which in this case will be the negative effects of the multinational companies, okay? Uh, can we give real company names? Yes, yes, if you can, uh, I don't think it's going to go any further than the examiner. So yes, you can definitely give real company names. The more specific the examples, the better. Yeah. Okay, then in the conclusion, what are we going to do in the conclusion? Um, okay, uh, Prahu, yes, use examples from research, use examples from surveys, studies, they don't have to be real, but it's very good specific information. Okay. Uh, okay, good. Uh, Mohammed, the first thing is to uh, summarize the viewpoints, just mention the viewpoints again. And then we give our own opinion. Good. Okay. And also with the opinion, you can then give a recommendation, which we will look at when we go more. Uh, into more detail with these, okay? So that's your structure, okay, for the discussion essay. So let's look at everything in more detail. Uh, so we've got the question again for you here with the underlined keywords. So what we're going to do first is to paraphrase the statement, okay? Um, so how do we do that? We've looked at this before. What are the different ways that you can paraphrase? Okay, very good. So you can use synonyms. Okay. Um, yes, Latifi, you're using your own words. So you can use synonyms. How else can you paraphrase? Okay, very good. Atta, you can change the word order. Very good, Aisha, you can change the word formation, so a verb to a noun, something like that. Okay, also very good, Del, active to passive, or passive to active. Okay, very good. Okay, so we have synonyms, we have word form, we have word order, and we have voice. Yes, Shaha, you could also, for example, use the, the gerund, gerund form, okay? So let's look more exactly at this. So we're going to start off with a general statement. So let's look at the missing word. Okay, very good, Nicola. It is often argued that, what else could you put? Remember this is a passive, so it needs to be with the passive form argued. Um, okay, suggested, believed, claimed, very good, Han. Okay, thought, it is often said that, very good. Here we've gone for argued. So a nice general statement to start, it is often argued that multinational, okay, in the statement we have corporations. Okay, so yeah, at our mark, we can have companies, we can have firms, some people put. Okay, we've gone for companies. Okay, are, Okay, in the, in the statement, we have a, a verb, we have benefit. Okay, very good, guys, very good, totally on top of this. So we've got the adjective beneficial, okay, beneficial to countries with, 
I've got two words here. Um, okay, I quite like Hoda. Um, okay, growing economy, I like that. Yeah, developing economy, very good, very good. Okay, so developing economies, okay. So that's our first side, okay. Then we're going to give the other side. So how do we make the contrast? Okay, very good, Zara. While, okay, so while others. Okay, remember if you use something like however or conversely, that's going to be at the beginning of a new sentence, okay? But while or whereas joins the sentences together, okay? Um, so while or, or whereas others, others think, okay, others believe, claim, okay, fine. So we've got hold, okay, claim, believe, consider those are all good options, okay. Okay, these corporations have a negative, okay, very good, impact, mm -hmm. effect. Okay, we've also gone for effect. All right, so that's your opening statement. Okay, um, yeah, um, yeah, outcome as well. That could work. And then you have your outline statement. So your outline statement, you are going to say what you're going to do in the essay. Okay, so here we've said this essay will. Okay, we could say discuss or consider, Michael, I think that's very good, yeah. Okay, present arguments, you would have to say, but consider is very good, illustrate is very nice as well. Um, so large companies which operate on a global scale, so again, another way of saying multinationals um, are, Okay, remember we've already talked about, yeah, yeah, beneficial. So we don't want to use beneficial, we've already used that. So we want to say, um, okay, advantageous, Nissan, that would work as well, helpful, something like that. Okay, so remember, try to avoid using the same words. Uh, always think, try and find a synonym, okay, to developing, very good, Manaxi, nations, okay. Okay, remember we've already used countries, so we want to use something else, okay. Okay, whether they're helpful to developing nations, okay, or... Okay, we've got some very good synonyms here. We've got detrimental, we've got damaging, we've got harmful. Um, okay, very Rahamath, very good. Uh, whether, we need to say first, whether they, um, what are we going to put here? Think about the form of the word. Think about adverbs, maybe. Okay, very good. Okay, so negatively or adversely affect the countries. Okay, very good, Candice. In which they, okay, I like operate, operate Bobby, that's very good. Um, are located or established. Okay, we've gone for do business. Okay, but I like operate as well. Okay, um, it's a bit more formal, Asil. It's not. 100% necessary, it's just a bit more formal, yeah. Okay, so there's our introduction. So we have our paraphrased question, or you could give a background statement and then an outline. You could also give your opinion at the end of the introduction as well, that's possible, okay. So let's move on to look at the body paragraph. Okay, so our first paragraph is looking at the positive sides. Uh, the arguments are up there just to remind you. Okay, um, so as we said, first sentence, 
Um, can you put that in the in the um, Q and A, Praho, so I can answer it in more detail? Yeah. Uh, first sentence, topic sentence. Okay. So let's have a look at this. So. As we said before, you know, research, studies, surveys, very nice way of introducing some ideas in an objective way, okay? Um, so yeah, a, a growing body of research, think about your tense here. Okay, we don't really wanna be in the past, we, Okay, good, very good, Del. Yeah, suggests that. Okay, um, keep it in the present. That's much better. Okay, multinationals have a. Okay, uh, almost Kishore immensely would be the word. Um, but you're right. You've got a, an adverb, so that's a very good. You've got the right form of the word uh, of the word. Okay, we're not quite getting the right form of the word. Um, yeah, immensely, we need an adverb here. Okay, so we've gone for generally. Okay, very good, I see. Um, consider, yeah, so you've got to use the adverb in front of the adjective. Generally positive, um, immensely positive would be okay. Um, that works very well. Okay, so we've now introduced the fact very clearly to the examiner that we are talking about the positive effects in this paragraph, okay? So then we introduce our first argument about the jobs, okay? So how can we introduce that it's the first argument? Okay, we can say firstly, yeah, to start with. Uh, furthermore has to be a second argument. Uh, well, you have to have given one first. Okay, yeah, to begin with. So here we've gone for first of all. Okay, international development can help to create. Okay, new works, job works. Yeah, okay, very good, Ramahath. We've gone for employment as well, okay. So now we're specifically talking about creating jobs. Yes, Candice, employment opportunities, very good. That works really well. So now we need to do the supporting evidence, okay? You've got to go into a bit more detail on this point, okay? So um, what can we put here? Okay, very good, Kishore, Nicola, very good. This can lead to, so we're giving the result of this situation. This can lead to an, okay, very good, Prahu, that would work, yeah. Excellent, an increase in wages and tax revenue. Okay, so we've got very specific supporting evidence, very important, okay. Then we show that we're moving on to our second idea. Uh, I would say increase Glenda, increment slightly different, yeah. How can we introduce then our second? Okay, we could say, we could say that. Uh, furthermore, okay. Just be careful guys, we, we don't wanna say however, or on the other hand, because we're not changing our idea here, we're adding a second point on the same side, okay? So additionally works, furthermore works, moreover works, but it's not a contrast, okay? So uh, you don't want to use those contrast words. Uh, so we've gone for furthermore, okay? The presence of international companies often Okay, improves, improves, make sure you get the right form of the verb, the quality of goods and services. Okay, uh, enhances is nice as well, Mohammed. that's very good. Yeah, and um, Akshata. Okay, so now again, we need to give 
supporting evidence. Go into more detail on this one. Um, that's good as well, Yulia. So very specifically, for example, a greater range of products may become available Okay, perfect, Brad, that would work due to any other ideas? Okay, just because we need a preposition here, okay. So, okay, that's all of those are good due to, okay, we can say as a result of, uh, in response to is very nice as well. Very good, yeah, okay. Okay, so two ideas, supporting evidence for each idea. That's the way to do it. Uh, same for the second body, body paragraph, but now we're going on to the negative effects, okay? So again, make it very clear in the first sentence what you are talking about in this paragraph, okay? So since we're moving from one side to the other side of the argument, okay, Keir, Brad, yeah. So all of those contrasting linking phrases, however, on the other hand, um, flip side, that's a great expression, but it's a bit informal for the writing, okay? So we've got however, okay. There are also negative, okay, very nice, Prahu, consequences. Okay, so we've gone for impacts, but yeah, there's different effects. That's very good. Aspects, very nice, yeah. Results, uh, which must be, okay, very good, considered. Uh, or addressed, very nice, that's good. Oh, I missed the name. Okay, uh, we've gone for considered. Highlighted works as well, David, that's very nice. Yeah, and Samin. So, introduce the first idea on that side, okay? Uh, so, one important, okay, that, that works. Try and avoid using thing, okay, because it's a bit too vague. We want to use very precise vocabulary, okay? I like drawback, it's very nice, yeah, okay. We've gone for issue, very good, Navita, but there's lots of different things you could have there. So one important issue, the profits generated by these companies. Okay, different ideas, usually works. Okay, so yeah, usually, mainly, we've gone for typically. Okay, but those are a good range of words that you've used there. Go to international shareholders. Okay, very nice guys, very nice. Rather than local people, okay? Very specific point, okay? Now we're going to go into a little bit more detail, give some supporting evidence. So this, quite this, just check the next bit, this, okay, yeah, means is probably the best one, but uh, yeah, there's other ones, this proves that is very nice, yeah, or shows that, that's very good. Okay, we've gone for means, this means that, so again, you're giving the result, what's the result of this situation? Uh, not all of the, okay, very nice, revenue, profits, income, very nice, Pam, wealth, very good, very good. Uh, again, we've gone for wealth, which is a nice, you know, less common word, okay? Very good. Move on to your second idea. Again, make it clear that you've moved on to the second point, okay? So we can introduce that with Okay, very good. Moreover, remember we used, we've already used furthermore. So yeah, moreover, in addition, very good. Okay. So with greater resources at their, oh, very good, Stella. 
very on the ball, yeah, both good, and Nishant and Tarun, very good. So at their disposal, at their, wow, at their fingertips, that's, that's very nice. Uh, large companies may threaten smaller businesses, okay? More detail. Okay, so we've got some very specific, and this goes back to, I think, something Mohammed was saying earlier, can you name specific companies? So, yes, this is what we've done here. Okay. Um, okay, yes, for instance, for example, um, consider would work slightly different grammar, but that's quite a nice way to do it, yeah. So, uh, for example, global chains, like is a little bit informal, yes, I should write, such as is better for a task to essay, okay? So McDonald's, Coca-Cola have a much larger, not just as, it's got to be such as, okay, very nice guys, lots of good words there, a much larger budget for advertising, a platform, that's quite nice as well, I like that. Allowing them to increase their market share. Okay, very good. You're ahead of me, Mark and Bobby, at the expense of local restaurants. Okay, very nice. So, okay, same format as the first um, body paragraph, but we're not using the same words. We're always, we're changing the introductory phrases. We're changing the linking phrases. We're not repeating any of the vocabulary very specific supporting evidence, okay? So finally, we need to move on to the conclusion, okay? All right, so um, we're going to just bring together what we've said, okay? Um, okay, to, to sum up, yeah, Praho, you can say to sum up or to conclude, we've gone for in conclusion, okay? So, what can we put there? Uh, to, to put it in a nutshell is a little bit informal, but it's a very nice expression, but it's a little bit informal, okay? Um, yeah, so there's a contrast here. So we've gone for while, but yes, you could use although. Uh, multinationals can benefit developing countries through job job opportunities, um, enrichment, that's very that's nice as well. Job creation, Stella, that's a very nice phrase. Yeah, good collocation. Um, so that's what we went for as well. And the, okay, quality would work, maybe availability, proliferation. We're getting some great words here. Okay, um, improvement, okay because we were specifically talking about better quality rather than just availability, okay? Um, there are also negative impacts. Okay, such as vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, very nice, Brad, very good. Uh, okay, so wealth transfer to international shareholders and the not quite loss. Competition with, okay, very nice. Ekaterina, oh, hi Ekaterina, I remember you from before. Uh, the threat to small businesses, very nice, and Venkata too, yeah, okay. And then personal opinion, okay, so we need a, a phrase to show that this is our opinion. Okay, in my view, in my opinion. Okay, make it clear. Uh, the effects are okay. Yeah, I like mostly. I like mostly. We've got generally, but mostly positive. Largely works as well. Yeah. Okay. But then we're going to put a bit of a, a contrast there. We're going to go a bit more specific. Yeah. Okay, very good, Vithya. Okay, and Prahu. So 
as I was saying at the beginning, so we give our opinion, but then it's very nice to give a recommendation in the conclusion. So you're sort of looking forward to the future. How can we, how can we solve these negative aspects of the situation while we keep the positive aspects? So something like should, ought to, need to, those kind of words look very well. Um, yeah, so government should regulate their activity to, okay, we're going for ensure, okay, ensure the greatest benefit to developing countries. Again, words like ensure, avoid, risk, these kind of words work very well in the conclusion, okay. Uh, or also words like achieve, a seal, those are very nice conclusion words, okay. Um, so that's the end of the presentation. So now we can move on to some questions. Yep. <laughs> I'll just join join you again there. Thank you. Can can everyone hear me? Okay. Yep. Excellent. So yeah, thank you so much, Anneli, for the presentation. That was very very interesting, and uh, I just I think. I'd like to invite everyone to uh, say thank you to Annalie. Thank you for your presentation very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you for um, your questions as well. We've had a lot of great questions mm. from you all. And um, before we uh, start to answer them, I would just like to draw your attention to say, if you would like more practice with this question type, you can find more example uh, essay questions uh, for discuss both views on our website, ieltsonlinetests.com. Um, you can see on the slides, uh, volume five, uh, test three, and volume four, test four, are both um, discuss both views questions. So you can go directly to that question type, and it will be the same type of question we've just been looking at. Um, on our website as well, we also offer um, a speaking evaluation service. Um, so if you're interested in improving your speaking as well as your writing, uh, this is a paid service and it would be with Annalie um, or myself. We're two of the examiners um, who can talk you through a mock speaking test for uh, the IELTS. Um, we can give you feedback on your performance in the test, an idea of your score, and um, you know how you can improve uh, your score. So, yep, uh, you're right, uh, Prahu, it is a paid service, I'm afraid. Uh, we might be offering future videos about uh, speaking, uh, which would be a bit more affordable as well. So there are different options available for you. Uh, so I think we can jump right in for uh, our Q&A. Lots of questions today. Uh, the first one, is from Asil, um, who has asked a very common question. What if I don't have any idea about the topic or don't understand exactly what it means? What should I do? Um, well, what you need to do is actually before you come to the test, a um, couple of things. Uh, one is to do as many practice essays as possible. Um, particularly try and find ones on subjects that you haven't done before. Some people, you know, there's a tendency, they just do technology all the time or pollution. I think, you know, I can do that. But try and find essays on subjects that are new to you. You don't always have to write the full essay. You can just make a plan. Think about what arguments you would put in on both sides. Um, and then you know that you've got some ideas. Um, if that kind of topic comes up. Um, the other thing to do uh, in preparation is reading articles on different subjects, watching documentaries on different subjects. Similar things come up in the IELTS, you know, um, health, diet, um, obesity, all of these kind of things. So, you know, do some research get your ideas. You're not only going to get your ideas, but you're also going to get vocabulary. Now you're going to get topic related vocabulary that then you can put into the um, into your essay. It's all out there. It's very easy to find. Um, that's what I would suggest. Yeah, definitely. And I, I would uh, add to that as well that, you know, it's not a test of your general knowledge. So none of the questions require you to really have, um, you know, a, 
uh, exact correct facts um, it's more can you structure an argument logically so as long as your ideas make sense it doesn't actually matter you know how uh, real or, or true they are so don't worry about you know if you don't know anything about the topic you you can invent you know facts to back up your your argument if need be mm -hmm. so yeah um, uh, we have a question here from Prahu, um, who is asking, uh, do we have to use a mix of sentence structures um, in order to get a high band score? Or is it okay to use simple structures, uh, simple st sentences, and present our opinion? Uh, so how important is the kind of complexity of the, the grammar? Um, yeah, in the, gra the grammar section, there's one section of the marking which is called grammatical range and accuracy. So when it says grammatical range, that means different types of structures. So you should be using pretty much all your sentences should be complex. Um, and you should be trying to use a range of structures um, to show that you, you have that ability. Um, if you are using a lot of simple structures or if your structures tend to be repetitive like you're just using sort of and and but to join sentences together you know that's you know going to be not certainly not more than a six uh, in that section um, so you really do need to have some complex sentences uh, in order to get a good mark in, in that particular um, in that particular criteria Definitely. Great. Um, hi there, Kier. Uh, Kier is asking, should I spell out the numerals from one to nine in writing tasks one and two? Or is it okay to write the, the numerals as a number? Uh, definitely in the task two, if it's a small number, uh, write it out. Okay, or a simple number. It doesn't have to be just one to 10. But for example, you know, 100, if it's one word, then write it out. Um, if it's more complicated, then you can write it as, um, as numerals. Um, similarly with the task one, if you've got a long number, just write it in numerals. Um, but if you say something like six, over the next six months, then that would be better written as a word. Yes. Great, thank you. We have a few questions here about examples, so I think we can try and tackle them uh, together. Mm -hmm. uh, SA is asking, how do we start anecdotal examples? So I guess this is an example from personal experience. Um, okay, well, the first thing is that don't phrase it as a personal anecdote, okay? They, um, they're not looking for personal anecdotes. You cannot say, you know, my friend told me that. Um, what you can do is you use it as an example, which you then apply more generally. So you can talk about your city or your country. You can talk about a specific um, job, okay, or profession. Um, so just apply it more generally rather than making it specific, rather than saying my cousin is a uh, a politician and you know just talk more generally about that but that's using the knowledge that you have yeah definitely so saying something like for example in my country you know a common occupation is like this and that will make it more general than um yeah uh, talking about your own personal life. Um, another, thank you. Another question from SA um, here. Um, if we lack uh, the 250 words, where can we add new sentences and how to make up the uh, to make up the word count? Um, well, that's a, quite a tricky question. Um, yeah. Okay, the first thing I would say is make sure that if you go back and add anything that it doesn't disrupt the flow of the essay and that it stays on the same side. Um, you don't want to have a, a really beautifully written paragraph and then at the end there's a sentence which doesn't seem to fit at all. Um, so if you are going to do that, make sure that the flow is there. I think you can always add, you know, you can add an example. Uh, you can expand on the example a bit more. Um, perhaps in the conclusion, you can add a recommendation if you hadn't already done that. Um, but do be very, very careful about doing that. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I would also add that um, if you include two main points in each paragraph with an ex explanation and an example, mm. honestly, it's going to be very difficult to come in under the word count. Um, if you just have one main idea in, in a paragraph, then that might be you might struggle, but if you have two two main ideas with an explanation mm -hmm. and an example, it's very easy to fill up the the word count. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that that might be one strategy as well you mm -hmm. could take. Yeah, and a long um, enough conclusion. Sorry, Jamie. I just yeah. sometimes I see just one sentence for the conclusion. That's mm -hmm. pretty much not ever going to be enough. Um, yeah. So you know, expand a little bit on the conclusion. Um, can I just answer a question David's asked in chat sure. very quickly? Yeah. Um, he's asking about the accuracy of the examples. It's fine to make something up, David. Um, just make it sound reasonable. Nobody's going to check. Nobody's going to, you know, um, see if that's uh, accurate information. Just make it sound okay. But it, it's perfectly fine to create a research that doesn't actually exist. Yeah, excellent. Um, we have a couple of questions uh, related to the introduction here. Um, one from Tunde uh, Dali, and he is asking, or they are asking, um, can in the introduction, can I paraphrase the question, outline my main points, and then state my opinion all in the introduction? Is that uh, okay for this type of essay? It's okay. I would put the outline last. Mm. Okay. Finish, always finish with the outline. So yeah. yeah, you could have kind of paraphrase or background statement, your opinion, and then say what you're going to do in the essay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Great. And uh, a question here from uh, J Jotin. Uh, they're asking about the outline statement. So I think it might be useful to to say a bit about the difference between an outline statement and a thesis statement, because we often use those words um, and it might not be clear for everyone what, what they mean. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, an outline statement is where you say uh, how you're going to approach this essay, what you are going to include in the essay. Um, and they, they work they work well for all of the different types of essays and they're probably the best way to finish the introduction in something like a problem solution essay or um, advantages disadvantages essay. Uh, you can also show the examiner that you've understood the kind of essay that it is by saying for example in this essay I will present some advantages or some benefits and some drawbacks before reaching a conclusion. Or, you know, I will um, present some causes before offering some solutions, something like that. Okay. Um, so you're just saying what you're going to put into the essay. A thesis statement is where you give your own opinion. Yeah, exactly. Great. Um, uh, next, uh, EPT is asking what is the probable score for this model essay? Um, and I think I can answer that one. I believe it would be a strong band nine. So uh, that that is, it has all the features that would uh, would make it a band nine. So yeah, Absolutely. it's a good a good model to use. Mm -hmm. um, Dell has asked: Is it necessary to provide examples in task two questions? Yeah, they specifically require supporting evidence. Um, so this is why we're suggesting, you know, on each side have two arguments um, and then for each of those arguments you go into more detail. You have to explain why that's an argument, why that's a possible argument uh, related to this topic. Uh, you can give examples, you can give reasons, you can give results. You know, there's various things that you can do. Um, but it is specifically mentioned in the examiner's guide um, that there is clear and specific supporting evidence for all of the arguments. Yeah, okay. thank you. Thanks, Stanley. Um, I'd just like to take a question from Dell um, in the chat. He said, please uh, tell me a little more about the speaking service. 
Um, essentially, Del, our speaking evaluation service is a full mock test um, with a, a qualified IELTS examiner. Um, so you'll book an appointment with them. They will conduct a speaking test with you um, for around 15 minutes. Uh, and they'll assess uh, your level for each of the different uh, speaking criteria. And then they'll give you uh, 15 minutes or so of verbal feedback on your performance. So your strengths and your, your weaknesses in each category. Um, and after that, we will send you a report um, saying uh, how, what you can do to improve uh, your, your speaking score. Uh, so both Annalie and I are, are some of the examiners providing that service. So you're welcome to book an appointment with us if, if you like. You can find that on our website, ieltsonlinetest.com. Mm -hmm. And we also offer a similar service for um, essay writing as well, Prahu. So you can find that on, on our website too. Um, if someone could pop the link in uh, the chat, that would be fantastic. So, um, yeah, I have another question here uh, from Frahana. Uh, what should uh, one look out for to get at least a band seven? Um, okay, so... There's different, there's four different criteria that the examiner are, examiners are looking at. Uh, so to get a seven, it, you would need, first of all, for task response, you would need a range of arguments, all of them with supporting evidence, as we just said. You would need a clear point of view in the conclusion. Uh, you would need to make sure that you had covered everything that was in the question and that everything that you wrote was relevant to the question, okay? So, for example, in this case, we were talking about developing countries. That's what you needed to um, focus on. Um, for um, lexical resource, vocabulary, you would need to be using very topic-specific vocabulary. Um, you would need to be using a good range of vocabulary, not repeating any words. Uh, your spelling and word formation would need to be completely accurate, um, or 99%. Um, grammar, range of sentences, all complex sentences, very high degree of accuracy. Um, and coherence and cohesion, you would have to be using paragraphs correctly, you would have to have a clear topic sentence for your body paragraphs, uh, and you would need to be using a good range of academic linking phrases. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'd say that was the main thing. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Um, there we have another uh, question from Awad, um, who was joined us with last week's webinar where we looked at task one. And uh, Awad is mentioning that last, last week you we confirmed that a conclusion is not required uh, for the writing, but today it's needed. So why, <laughs> why, why are we saying there was a, there's, we need a conclusion today and not next week? Um, okay, so th there's, there's a conclusion for the task two. It's an essay, so the essay has to have a conclusion. The task one is different. It's like a report. You have an overview, but you don't have any conclusion. You're not presenting arguments. You're not presenting a point of view. Okay. So task one, overview. Task two, conclusion. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Brijesh, um, where can you find the recording for this webinar? It will be on our Facebook page. Um, and if, if you could pop a link to that in the chat, that would be great as well to help uh, Brijesh find our uh, Facebook page. Uh, that will go up in the next couple of days. Um, Rashid has asked the question, how do we structure our paragraphs um, if you intend to support both sides? So I guess this is discussing both views mm -hmm. of the, how would you structure um, that kind of essay? Uh, um, yeah, so if you have a discussion essay, you're going to have two opposing arguments in the question. So basically you would have one body paragraph which would support the first statement and then one body paragraph which would support the second statement 
And then in the conclusion, you would give your own point of view. Okay. And you would make it very clear what you were doing in each of those body paragraphs. Excellent. Thank you. Um, uh, SA is asking, can we use for an example instead of for example? Uh, no, you can say to give an example mm. or for example, but you can't say for an example. No. Great. Yeah. And um, anonymous <laughs> attendee, uh, the, the hacking group is, uh, <laughs> is saying, is a difficult vocabulary promising to get good bands? So if you, I guess if you use very specialist vocabulary, does that guarantee that you'll uh, have a good, a good score? Um, yeah, what they're looking at, to get a seven in the lexical resource, um, it's what they call less common. So, you know, not your more basic, more general vocabulary, but something that's, you know, more interesting that not many of the candidates would be able to use. Um, very specific to the topic as well. Um, so here we had multinationals, we had, you know, at their disposal budget, all very specific to economies and multinationals. Um, collocation is also very important to get a seven. So that's using the right words together um, and being able to manipulate the language. So being able to change the form of the word, um, that would be something else that would be important for the for the vocabulary, for the lexical resource. Definitely. Um, we have a question from Dell, um, who is asking, what are the different types of task two questions? Mm -hmm. um, so there is the discussion essay, where you have two opposing statements, and you must do that as a balanced essay. You must support both of those statements. Um, there's a, an opinion essay, where you have one statement, and you agree or disagree with that statement. Um, you have advantages, disadvantages essays, uh, where obviously you're talking about the advantages and disadvantages of a certain thing. Um, you have specific questions, which don't really uh, fit into the normal ones, but they're asking two or possibly three very specific questions, which you have to answer. Um, and we also have problem solution essays where you are giving the causes of a, a global problem or a current problem and then offering some solutions to that problem. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd like to add that uh, we, have, uh, so we have covered many of these topics in previous webinars. Uh, the recordings of these are all on our Facebook page, uh, which is in the chat. So if you'd like to go back and have a look at those webinars, you can see examples of these different uh, essay types as well. Um, we are also, we're planning to have regular webinars at the same time on a Thursday. So if there are particular topics that you'd like us to cover, um, put them, uh, you know, you can comment uh, on, the, on the chat. You can add to our Facebook group, uh, drop us an email via the website as well. Uh, we can plan specific sessions based on your suggestions. So yeah, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. Um, I'm sorry, but that's all we've got time for, for today. So we're not able to answer the rest of your questions, but uh, feel free to add it on our, our Facebook group and we can uh, try and help you on there as well. So I'd just like to close by saying, a Big thank you to everyone for joining us and to Annalie for presenting today. And we hope to see you again for our next webinar next week. So thanks guys. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thanks very much. See you again. Cheers. Bye-bye. See you bye. next time. I hope. Bye. Yeah, bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>